I want you to imagine having electronic communication with your son mm. on FaceTime. Mm. And imagine that your ex-wife has dressed him as a drag queen to talk to you. Mm. He has false eyelashes and makeup. His hair has got glitter in it. He's wearing a dress. Now, imagine how you would feel mm -hmm. seeing what I believe is actual sexual abuse. I believe this is not just emotional abuse, but is the very most fundamental form of sexual abuse, tampering with the sexual identity of a vulnerable boy. Mm -hmm. Every single day, you have to see your son sexually abused and you have to maintain your calm. Mm -hmm. You have to be the one who's calm because the courts are not going to be fair to you. Mm -hmm. and the only way you can survive this and get your son through this alive is to calmly allow your son to be tortured right before your eyes and outlast the opposition. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. So basically what's been going on is that I've been doing a lot of research for a very thorough, well-cited video that I wanted to release before this weekend. But as some of you may know, Politicon is this weekend and it's in Nashville. So I'll be there. Cameraman Badan will be there. So if you're going to be there, come say hi. But um, I didn't want to rush it and have it not be as good as I want it to be because I think it'll actually end up being one of the most important videos that we've ever done. So that's going to be posted sometime next week. And it was actually inspired in part by what we're talking about today, which is gender theory, but more specifically the case of a seven-year-old boy named James whose mother has convinced him that he is a girl and seeks to chemically castrate him as a means to help him feel comfortable in this gender identity that she's ascribed to him. So I wanted to do a quick video covering this and that clip that you saw in the beginning was a clip of the father describing what he goes through when dealing with this entire situation. And I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine watching your ex-wife abuse your child in front of you and then know that the only way you can possibly help him is to just stay completely calm? Because the second you express any sign of anger, it's just over. You're unstable, you're unfit, doesn't matter that it's a completely warranted reaction to having your son's identity corrupted by his mother. Just take a look at the video of James when he was just three years old. Oh, you're a boy, right? No, I'm a girl. Who told you you were a girl? Mommy. <clears throat> when did she tell you you were a girl? Cause I love girls. Oh, I see. So mommy told you you were a girl? Uh-huh. Um, any, does mommy, um, do anything else like with a girl with you? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like Jesus. What, what does she do? She do, comes in front of me. She puts dresses on you? Oh, wow. And what else does she do? She buys my headbands. Uh-huh. And she, and and she get me hair clips. Oh, hair clips. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Some microphones. What else? Like a skeleton. Does she do anything with your fingers? Yeah. What? She paints my nails. So that why does she do that? Cause I love my nail polish. Oh, so mommy puts you in a dress and puts nail polish on you. Mm -hmm. And, and what does mommy tell you? She tells me I'm a girl. Oh, okay. Do you think you're a girl? Uh-huh. You do? Is that why you wear this, so that you can have long hair? Mm-hmm. Okay. So first, let's explain the story behind this whole thing. You've got James's dad, Jeff Younger. He becomes the primary caregiver for his sons when they were born. And then the wife, Dr. Ann Gorgulous, I think it's pronounced, AKA crazy bitch. She was working 60 to 80 hours a week as a physician in a private practice. So Jeff worked from home. He had a flexible schedule so that he could raise his boys. And then his stepdaughter, Sydney and Zoe. So he was very active in all the kids' lives. But as the kids got older, his relationship with Zoe began to deteriorate. She began disobeying him and just being generally disrespectful. And during all of this, crazy bitch was siding with Zoe more than her husband. And it's important to note 
quote, that at this time, crazy bitch wasn't exactly stable. She suffered from postpartum depression after the pregnancy. And Jeff says that she really never recovered from this. So then crazy bitch starts taking the daughters out in the evenings for hours on end, leaving Jeff at home with the boys, home with the boys. Um, and then for whatever reason, the daughters start being more frequently disrespectful to Jeff and crazy bitch seems to actually be amused by this behavior. And then one day Jeff walks in on crazy bitch telling the daughters what to say to the psychologist, which was that they should say they're depressed most of the time. They have no motivation anymore. They're feeling worthless and tired all the time. They were having dark thoughts pertaining to death and suicide. So Jeff immediately contacts a lawyer who tells him not to move out of the house. But then a few weeks later, crazy bitch tells Jeff to move out of the house. But it would only be temporary because Zoe just has to calm down, whatever. But since he had heard their previous conversations, he knew she was lying. So he refused. Crazy bitch then threatened him with imprisonment. She said, well, the girls will say whatever I want them to say. And Jeff could go to jail if he didn't leave. And so Jeff consults his lawyer. And they agree that it's best to stay out of the house and away from crazy bitch and the girls. So he moves to an apartment a couple miles away from the house. Fast forward through this whole divorce process. She was slandering him, assassinating his character to their peers, etc. Now we get to where Jeff tried to explain to the officials that Crazy Bitch was intentionally manipulating James's gender identity. The officials literally laughed at him and told him there was no evidence of this, which prompted Jeff to show them the video that I just played for you of James when he was three years old, but still nothing was done. After the divorce, Jeff was financially drained. And then at James's fifth birthday party, Crazy Bitch forced James to wear a dress and come out as a girl to everyone at the party, including many people from their church. Witnesses told Jeff that they saw James hiding in a corner, crying his eyes out at the party, his fifth birthday party, lest we forget. Crazy bitch goes on to enroll James at school as a girl. She denies the father custody of James on multiple occasions. If his possession time overlapped with a school event, she would use that to keep him from seeing his son. And she basically used James's gender identity, which she forced upon him, as we'll expand upon in just a moment, to keep him from seeing his father. And so now James is dressing like a girl at school. He's using the girl's bathroom. All the authority figures at the school refer to him as a girl. That's the teachers, administration, janitors, etc. And this is all being perpetuated by crazy bitch in order to separate James from his father because she knows that he will never support his son believing that he's a girl, which just so happens to be the result of his mother's conditioning. And here's where it gets more interesting. When James is with his father, he acts like a totally normal boy, doesn't act like a girl, doesn't take interest in girls' toys, he refuses to wear girls' clothing, and so this purported gender dysphoria coincidentally ceases to exist whenever James is not with Crazy Bitch. And this has been thoroughly corroborated. The only time James is ever exhibiting female behavior is when he's with Crazy Bitch. And Jeff and his now ex-wife, Crazy Bitch, were in court last week fighting over custody and decision-making abilities for James and his twin, Jude. Crazy Bitch wants to continue to transition James into a girl called Luna. Jeff wanted to take a wait-and-see approach rather than start the child on puberty blockers. 11 out of 12 jurors decided Monday that Jeff should not be granted sole managing conservatorship over his twin boys. And Crazy Bitch admitted in court she's not actually the twin's biological mother. She used in vitro fertilization via an egg donor to just them. And so on Monday, a jury ruled 11 to 1 that the current joint managing conservatorship should be replaced by a sole managing conservatorship. Uh, but Jeff should not be that person. So this would give total control of Jeff's sons to Crazy Bitch. And Judge Cook's ruling was originally scheduled for Wednesday afternoon, but it was delayed. And so since kindergarten, Crazy Bitch has enrolled James in school as a girl under the name Luna. She began telling him that he's a girl when he was just three years old and testified in court that she actually began to believe that when he liked a McDonald's toy meant for girls. His pediatric records indicate Crazy Bitch has met with Genesis, a medical transition clinic in Dallas, and is considering hormone suppression when James is a bit older, maybe closer to eight or nine years old. Prior to this case, Crazy Bitch had exclusive rights to make decisions regarding psychological and psychiatric care for James and Jude, though she needed to inform Jeff of her decisions, but he could not weigh in or change the decisions. And so on Thursday, thanks be to God, the judge presiding over this case of Jeffrey Younger, uh, the father who was trying to protect his seven-year-old son, James, from being chemically castrated via a gender transition, ruled that the parents will have joint conservatorship over James, which includes making joint medical decisions for the child. And this is likely the best outcome of this whole situation. And some of you may be wondering why I've insisted upon referring to James's mother as a crazy bitch. And the reason for that is actually that she is in in fact, a crazy bitch. She is a crazy, vindictive, unstable, delusional bitch who is actively seeking to ruin the life of a young boy to whom she's not even biologically related, frankly, out of some twisted grudge against her ex-husband. 
Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I don't know what happened, but this bitch is crazy. She needs to be put in jail. She needs to be stripped of her medical license. She's a pediatrician. Did you know that? Reviews of her medical practice showcase that she was unnecessarily forcing this BS gender theory on her young patients and on young James as well. And we've talked a lot about the causes of gender dysphoria, particularly in kids. We've talked about the effects of it. You can go back and watch those videos because I think they're great resources. I think they provide a good explanation. But I just want to highlight one component right now, which is that she had been telling James that he was a girl at least since he was three years old. And she testified in court that part of the reason was, well, he liked the girls' toys at McDonald's. And this affirms what we already know about the environmental factors that cause gender dysphoria to manifest. Because if you've got a young child who, let's say, he's interested in girls' toys, maybe he prefers to play with girls at recess, whatever. Now, if that child is not exposed to the truth, his understanding of his own gender might be something like boys play with cars, girls play with dolls, I like to play with dolls, so I must be a girl. And this would be where the competent parent would step in and say, no, actually, you're a boy. And then he'd say, oh, okay. But instead, what we're seeing is, oh, you say you're a girl? Okay, well, you're a girl. Doesn't matter that you're three years old. Doesn't matter that, I don't know, 75 to 95% of cases dealing with children with gender confusion, uh, they outgrow the confusion. It doesn't matter that giving you these hormones will chemically castrate you. It doesn't matter that the transgender suicide rate is exponentially higher than the normal suicide rate. If you say you're a girl, then you're a girl. Who cares that I'm ruining and actually endangering your life? I'm progressive, and that's the thing. His mom, for whatever reason, is conditioning him to believe this. But he clearly does not have legitimate confusion. According to the DSM, in order to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria, you have to meet at least six of the diagnostic criteria. James meets zero of them. He doesn't have a strong desire to be the other gender, nor does he insist that he's a girl. That only happens when he's with his mother. When he's not with his mother, he's fine. He refers to himself as a boy. He plays like a boy, etc. He doesn't have a strong preference to wear clothes made for the opposite gender. Again, he only does this when he's with his mother. When he's with other people, he refuses to wear girls' clothing. He will only wear boys' clothing. He displays no preference for acting like a girl. Again, he only does this with his mom. When he's with everyone else, he acts like a normal, healthy little boy. He doesn't have a preference for playing with girls' toys. Same thing as before only with his mom. He doesn't have a strong preference for playmates of the other gender. Same thing as before. He doesn't reject typically male activities. Again, same thing. And he's shown no signs of disliking his sexual anatomy, and he's shown no signs of wanting the opposite sexual anatomy. Oh, why is that, you ask, Mrs. Crazy Bitch? Because he's seven. Because he is seven years old, and the only reason he does this around you is because, allegedly, it's the only way he can get you to show him any affection. You're evil, and I hope you rot in a jail cell. But luckily, hopefully, we won't get to that point because we're going to do everything in our power to make it illegal to treat minors with these hormones. We're going to do everything in our power to start treating this as what it is, which is child abuse. Legislation is already being introduced by a Texas representative. It's going to happen. We're going to prevent the risk of something like this ever happening again, because no man should ever be put in a position like this man was. I cannot begin to imagine the level of self-control required to go through what he has been going through. But more importantly, we're going to make it so that no child is ever at risk of being chemically castrated to appease his mother's progressive, unscientific agenda. But I'm telling you right now, we can get excited, we can talk about what we're going to do. Oh, here's where we're finally drawing the line, but it's like, I don't know, man. Remember less than five years ago when it was just that we had to accept gay marriage and then the transgenders co-opted the momentum from the gay activists and ushered in their own agenda and now we're just seeing the results of it? We have to do something. And I don't mean, hmm, we have to do something. And then you go, hmm, I agree. Click next video. No, I mean, we, this group, this little community we have here, we need to do something because I have witnessed throughout this whole journey an alarming amount of apathy coming from conservatives. And to be honest with you, it drains my motivation. It thoroughly depresses me. This dad has a page set up to raise money to help him with legal fees, childcare costs, all these financial burdens that were imposed upon him while he was trying to literally save the life of his son. And so... I checked the number of times the fundraiser has been shared on social media, and that number exceeds the amount of donations that it's received. And so I tweet the link out to it, and I saw a lot of retweets, but not a lot of new donations. And I just, I don't understand, I don't understand the apathy. I don't understand this mentality of, well, I can do my part by sharing it. I don't actually want to take time to put in my information and give even $1, but I'll share the charity on social media because all my friends will take the time and do it. So I've done my part. No, you haven't, frankly. You can give $1. You can take two minutes. The link will be in the description. You can help support this file. I am a demonetized content creator and I managed to find a thousand dollars to donate to this father and yeah I need the money but I believe he needs it more than I do right now and that's not to say oh well, look at me I'm so virtuous and no that's just to say that if someone like me who you all know is not living lavishly virtually all of my videos get demonetized I finally 
added a way for you guys to support me through an independent website because I did not want to go through Patreon because they discriminate against conservatives, but people aren't really doing that. And for those of you that have, I appreciate it. You know that because I've spoken with most of you. I've personally thanked most of you, but it's interesting because the people who are supporting what we do here are actually contributing substantially, which again is such a blessing. But what that means is that it's not that the memberships we're selling are too expensive. It's just that people don't care enough to take two minutes and sign up for less than the price of a Starbucks coffee. That's what's really depressing about this, but I won't hesitate to give literally as much as I can to help that child and to help that father because that's what it's about. It's not about money. It's never been about money. It's about principles. The same reason I would not associate with Patreon, the same reason I don't take money from companies, it's about the principles. It's about the values, and that's all it will ever be about, and it's very disheartening to be in this position and to have people that claim to want to stop this. Oh, we have to stop this. This is evil. I'm right there with you, and it's like, great. Can you give this guy $5? It's like, oh, can't, sorry. I just, I don't understand. I don't even know what to do about it to be completely transparent or rather to continue to be completely transparent with you because this isn't politics as usual. This isn't just, ah, those darn Democrats always trying to raise our taxes. No, they're literally trying to inject your kids with hormones that make them infertile. And if you don't see how that's different, I don't know what to tell you at this point. I know this is not what we want to hear. We just want to own libs and build the wall. This is the reality of our situation, and it's not pretty, but if we want to be successful, then we're going to have to accept it. This isn't just politics as usual. This is a war. This is literally a war, and everyone needs to do their part. Everyone needs to contribute, and if you don't want to go out and protest or anything like that, that's fine, but you can give a few dollars to a political action committee. You can give a few dollars to a think tank, to a foundation, charity, even fathers who have been financially crippled trying to save the life of their son, and I know that a lot of people are going to react to this negatively, like, oh, well, that's my hard-earned money, and I do as I please with it. Fine whatever, do what you want. But the harsh reality is that because previous generations failed to act and allowed our country to get to this point in the first place, we are now, and I mean all of us, going to have to pick up the slack and make sacrifices because of that if we expect to ensure that future generations can thrive. And if we can't get into that frame of mind, if we're not willing to accept that burden, like I, I, I don't know what we're even doing here. Like truly, what's the point? They're not going to stop. And if we aren't actually putting in effort to stop them seriously, then what's the point? Oh, well, I explained why Medicare for All is impractical to everyone at the water cooler this morning. It's like, yeah, great. Have you considered maybe donating money to this? It's like, easy there. This is my hard-earned money. Uh, okay, fine. Forget it. Like, that that's basically where I'm at right now. Hey, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel. And please go donate any amount that you can to Jeff, the father of James. That man has gone through unimaginable hell to protect his son. He is the most courageous man in America that I can think of right now, and he deserves our support and he needs our support, and so we should give that to him. So thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. Poof.